You are not the same person. I'm not the same person that I was or that you were when we were on the Norland. We have all experienced events in the last four weeks that have probably changed our lives considerably. When you hear the whistle of something coming in, you're not sure what it is, but you know it's nasty. Or you've got a bit of cover and you know that you're going to have to get up and move and there's somebody trying to kill you. Then you begin to see what the priorities are in life. You begin, perhaps even, to talk to God. But when you're faced with these stark realities, I think you would be a very insensible person if you didn't think more profoundly than perhaps you ever have in your life before. Certainly, people have said to me, you know, I've learned more about myself in the last 10 minutes um, than I've learned in my entire life so far. <laughs> what I would ask you to remember is what you felt when you thought you were going to die. And what was important to you then? It may have been your wife, it may have been your girlfriend, it may have been your dog. <laughs> <laughs> it may even, it may even have been your life itself. But remember, uh, when the chips are down, that's what's important. And when, it be when life becomes easy again, and these realities become obscure, just remember that when you did have your back against the wall, <coughs> spiritually, mentally, when things did cause you to think very, very hard about what really mattered, remember how much God figured in that. And don't forget, and remember who was important to you. And when you get home, and you've been back home four or five weeks, and you're beginning to take your wife, or your girlfriend, or your dog, <laughs> for granted, well, just remember, think on, as I say, in the part of the world that um, Colonel Gerard and I come from, what is important, and try to model and mould your life on that. Because if that's what's seen you through to this, then it won't do you any harm in seeing you through the rest of your life.